Welcome to section 19.4a. In this section, what we're going to talk about are we're going to talk about isomers. Now, isomers are going to be molecules that are made out of the same number of atoms of the same type. However, they are put together differently. And based on how they're put together, you will generate different molecules. These will react differently and they will behave differently. So there are certain types of isomers that we can have. One type of isomer that we can have are the so-called structural isomers. Now in the structural isomers, my connectivity is going to be different. There are different bonds in these types of isomers. Now in this chapter, what we're gonna focus in on are coordination isomers and linkage isomers. We'll revisit this topic when we talk about organic chemistry in chapter 21. The other type of isomer that we have are stereoisomers. In stereoisomers, my connectivity is the same, meaning I have the same type and number of bonds. However, what is different is the spatial arrangement of my atoms. In this chapter, what we're gonna be talking about are geometric isomers and optical isomer. Now, I should mention that your book says geometric isomers are cis-trans isomers, a better description is these are isomers with different angles. So if you wanna make that correction, I think that would be a wise one. So let's go ahead and get started and let's first discuss some structural isomers. So the ones that we're gonna focus on are coordination isomers and linkage isomers. Let's go ahead and discuss coordination isomers. Coordination isomers means that I have different things coordinating to the metal center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch one of my counter ions with a ligand. So let's take a look at these two guys. These guys are coordination isomers. And let's go ahead and draw them out. So gentle people, here I've drawn those two molecules out for you. Both of these molecules are octahedral. Now you'll notice in the first molecule listed that we had a bromine that was the counter ion. So it is not a ligand and not directly attached to our metal. In fact, what is attached to my metal is the chlorine. One isomer that you can draw for this structure is you can switch these two entities. This is what you'll see on the right hand side. In this case, now my bromine is a ligand and my chlorine is the counter ion. What I have are two different connectivities. These are two different molecules. They are isomers of each other. The next type of isomer that I wanna discuss are linkage isomer. Now in linkage isomers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my ligand attached by a different atom. Let's take a look at the ligand NO2 minus. If I were to draw the ligand out for you as a Lewis structure, this is what you would see. What you will notice is that this ligand has a lot of lone pairs. They have lone pairs on oxygen and they have lone pairs on nitrogen. So what can happen is I can attach this ligand in two different places. One way that I can attach my ligand is through the nitrogen. And so I would draw a structure like this. The other way that I can attach this ligand is through the oxygen, shown in this structure right here. Now again, these are made out of the same atoms. However, these are isomers of each other. What I have is a different connectivity. One is connected through a nitrogen, the other connected through the oxygen. Now you will see that these are written out in the molecular formulas to highlight this change. Usually when it is connected through the nitrogen, you will see the ligand written as NO2. If it's attached through the oxygen, what you will see is it's listed as ONO. Now the ligand has different names or the connection through the nitrogen, we call this ligand nitro. And if it is connected through the oxygen, we call it nitrido. Now let's go ahead and talk about geometric isomers. Geometric isomers are considered stereoisomers. What you will see here are all my bonds are the same, meaning the connectivity is the same. But what is different is the spatial arrangement. Let's take a look at the square planar complex listed right here. Now what you will see is I have two different ligand types. I have two ammonias, which I can call ligand A, and I have two chlorines, which I'll consider ligand B. 
and we can do the same labeling on the structure below. So let's take a closer look at these molecules. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what I did to help explain geometric isomers to you guys is I built two little models. Now you guys can invest in a model kit if you are having trouble visualizing things in three dimension. I think it's a good investment when you start organic chemistry and you guys are allowed to use model kits on my test. So let's go ahead and discuss some geometric isomer. So what I built for you guys are two different molecules, molecule A and molecule B. Now what you'll notice is that both molecules are made out of the same atoms. There's going to be my metal represented in gray. I also have ligand A represented in green and ligand B represented in black. Now you'll notice that each of my ligands, there are two of them. There are two green spheres and two black spheres. Now what you can see is that the connectivity in each one of these molecules are the same. There are two green-gray connections, and there are two black-gray connections. So these are not structural isomers because everything is connected the same way. Now what is different is the way these atoms are arranged in space. If you look at the left-hand molecule, what you'll notice is the, the angle between the green spheres are 90 degrees. However, the angle on the one on the right is 180 degrees. The same can be said with the black spheres. On this molecule, the black spheres are 90 degrees apart. On this molecule, the black spheres are 180 degrees apart. Because the angle between the green spheres are 90 degrees apart, you can see that the green spheres look like they're on the same side. This is the so-called cis structure. Cis meaning that they are on the same side. On this molecule over here, what you'll notice is the green spheres are 180 degrees. They are on opposite sides of the molecules. So since they are on different sides, this is the trans configuration. Now, these two molecules are fundamentally different. There is no way that I can turn this molecule such that it looks like this molecule over here. No matter if I rotate it, spin it, flip it, what you guys will see is there's no way for these two molecules to look the same. For them to become the same molecule, I have to break bonds, and that means a chemical reaction. So inherently, these molecules are different. What this also means is that their reactivity is going to be different. Let's say I use this box as an example. And let's say that this box, the edge of this box, is the active site for a protein. That means a molecule is going to come in and collide here and react at this spot right here on my protein surface or my box surface. Now, for this reaction to occur, let's say that I have to have an effective collision. And an effective collision means that I have two green spheres hit that box at the same time. If I look at my first molecule, what you guys will notice is that it has the two green spheres on the same side. It is the cis configuration, meaning it can come up to my protein's active site and attach and make an effective collision. However, let's look at that second molecule that we talked about, the one in the trans configuration. Now, if this were to come up to my protein's active site, what you will see is there's no way for this one to attach to my protein's active site. It would come into contact with my protein's active site, but there are not two green spheres on the right side. So this molecule would not be able to react with my protein. Thus, I hope you can see that both of these molecules will have different reactivities. So to reiterate what you guys saw with those models, the cis structure is going to have my ligands 90 degrees from each other. They will appear to be on the same side. The trans structure is going to have ligands on the opposite sides of each other. You can say that they are going to be 180 degrees apart. Now, I'm going to emphasize this. Geometric isomers are going to have different 
angles, but the same type of bonds. And to highlight that these things have different reactivities, let's look at these platinum isomers. This top molecule is called cisplatinum. You'll notice that the ammonias are on the same side and the chlorines are on the same side. This is a very potent anti-cancer drug. However, there is an isomer of cisplatinum and that is the transversion of this molecule. Now in the transversion of the molecule, you'll notice the chlorines are 180 degrees apart and so are the amines. It turns out that transplatin has no anti-cancer properties. So if you are a cancer patient, it is imperative that you get the right version of the molecule. One version of the molecule is going to help you fight that cancer. The other molecule, in essence, is just drinking water. It has no effect. So now you can see why it's important to distinguish geometric isomers. So here's our next quiz question. Why don't you guys take a moment, draw out the structures, and see if you can figure out which one of these has geometric isomers. Again, remember, we want different angles. So the first thing I want you guys to notice is that we do not care about the counter ions in this case. We are not interested in coordination isomers. So what I wanna do is just focus in on whatever's in the braces. That means I just want the complex ion. To make life simpler, I'm just going to abbreviate each kind of ligand type. So in this case, what I'm gonna say is that anytime I have a water, I'm just gonna abbreviate it as A, and anytime I have a chlorine, I'm gonna abbreviate it as B. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second complex that I gave you. What you guys will notice is that this has six ligands, so it is coordination number six. If it's coordination number six, that means it's gonna adopt an octahedral geometry. That means there are six spots for me to put my ligand. In this case, I have to distribute six A's across. Now there's only one way to go ahead and do this, and that's simply just putting an A in every spot. So this one cannot have geometric isomer. Let's take a look at the complex that I first gave you guys. Again, this is going to adopt an octahedral geometry. So I have to place five A's or five waters and one chlorine or one B. Now what you guys will notice is that in an octahedral geometry, every one of those six spots are equivalent. So it doesn't matter where I put the B. This structure right here is going to be the same as this structure right here. It doesn't matter where I put the B because all of these things are equivalent. And I do not generate different angles. You'll notice that the B anywhere that I put it is always going to be 90 degrees from four A's and 180 degrees from one A. The same reasoning here applies to the third complex I gave you, because again, we don't care about counter ions for geometric isomer. So let's go ahead and tackle our last structure. So again, I have six ligands, coordination number six, and octahedral geometry. This time around, I have to place around two A's and four B's. So let's go ahead and put our first A on top. Once I've put this first A on top, you'll notice that there are two different positions that I can put my second A. The first position that I could put it in is 90 degrees. Note that there are other 90 degree spots here. So any one of those positions would be 90 degrees from the first A. And so I can go ahead and fill in the rest of my molecule. Now again, I could have put A in any one of those red spots and it would have been the same molecule. A would have been 90 degrees from another A. However, you'll notice that there was one spot that I did not underline. So again, let's draw an octahedral. Let's put our first A on top, and this time I'm gonna choose the 180 degree position. 
Now I have my A's 180 degrees apart. I can go ahead and fill in the rest of my molecule. And what you guys will see is I've drawn an isomer. These are the geometric isomers. In the first molecule, my A's are 90 degrees apart from each other. This is so-called the cis structure because they are on the same side or 90 degrees apart from each other. The second molecule, my A's are 180 degrees from each other. This is called the trans structure. So now I hope you guys can see why option D has geometric isomers. And just to highlight this, here are geometric isomers in octahedral geometries. Again, cis means that they're 90 degrees, trans 180 degrees from each other. I hope that made sense, Chem1C, and remember to stay safe.